Welcome to another episode of A to Z Sports Talk. We have so much to get to today. The MLB trade deadline is less than two days away. We have our top, I guess, how many quarterbacks did we do? Top couple? I did 10. Okay, did you really? I, I don't, I'm not, I'm not like cheating. There's like a million <laughs> schools going. Cool, okay. Nice. So we have our top. I guess I'll 10. do my like, you guys do your three. I'll do all of them. Yeah, I did three. Uh, what else we got? We have uh, the NFL season is right around the corner as training camps have begun. And we will be predicting the New England Patriots. You guys got anything to say before we get started? Got a jam-packed episode today. I will say I completely forgot about the Patriots, but I can do that on the fly. Um, gotcha. Yeah, same. Oops. Yeah, I did. I did everything else. I, like, did trade deadline stuff, did the college football quarterbacks. But, yeah, I can go off the top of my head. Um, yeah, I'm doing pretty good. Watched the new Thor movie yesterday. It was good. It wasn't it, my how, favorite how, Marvel how did movie. The, I was going to say, how does it compare to the other Thors? Because I heard it wasn't that great. I, I've only seen Thor Ragnarok, the one before this, and this one. I have never seen the ones before it because they never were considered good. Uh-huh. So it was okay. Like I liked Ragnarok more, but it, Thor movies are just not as – I was telling Colin this before. They're not as like serious as some of the other ones. It's like more lighthearted, which is fine, but – Sometimes you like the like the ones that are intense, like the whole way, just like you're like engaged more, I guess. Yeah. But I had like kind of like a cough, like a little like tickle in my throat that day. Uh-huh. And so I'm in the movies and I didn't cough the whole movie until like the end. And there's like an emotional scene. And I'm like trying to hold it in. It's like tickling <laughs> my throat. So then I'm holding it in. So then my eyes start watering and I'm like, great. Now everyone thinks I'm going to be crying. During this. And I'm like, screwed. I just like start coughing. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Colin, you doing good? Yeah, I uh, went out to some bars on Friday. Had a pretty good time. Um, struck out with the bartender. Um, and then today I went up up to a little North Michigan and went on a hike. It was pretty, it was really nice. Um, I was like the only person in the entire like national forest, I, it seemed like. Uh, there was no other cars in the parking lot. So it was super peaceful. But a pretty short hike, uh, and then I just turned around and came home. So it was like an hour drive, and then hiked for like an hour and a half, then drove an hour back. So, oh dang! But yeah, I mean, it was fun. That's Got to fun. see, like, just trying to figure out like some cool places around here. So yeah, you uh, better better find it because you're going to be there a while. <laughs> yeah, and I uh, well, it's going to get too cold to do anything outside, anyways. I told True. Zach, I think. Yeah, um, good news. Yeah, I think I'm gonna get a PS4 uh, once it Let's starts. Let's go. Getting cold. Yeah. Now we'll now we're also gonna be streaming our uh, Call of Duty games <laughs> together. Twitch. Yeah, Twitch. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, I was thinking. Um, I guess this is something we could talk off off air more. But uh, when you get to a thousand, uh, I guess followers on TikTok, you can go live. And I just I really want to do that because like going live during a Cardinals game or a Blues game. Uh, I, I think we mentioned it in the past. I mean, people are interested in that, you know, watching yeah. live reactions and stuff. We're almost um, halfway there. Almost at 500. Yeah, they just keep on coming. And then our YouTube's at 86 now. I told you guys just a few minutes ago. Uh, and our last couple... Twitter's at have... 17. Let's go. Hey, yeah, you guys got to follow Twitter because Zach, Zach's coming out with some good ones for sure. I know. It had I, so much pressure. <sighs> you had me laughing pretty hard on a couple of them. Uh, a couple of the Paul DeYoung ones had me laughing pretty hard. <laughs> So let's get it going with our Did You See It? I can get mine out of the way real quick. I was going to just save it for football whenever we talk about that. But Julio Jones, we didn't talk about it last time, signed a one-year deal with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Mm, I thought Another... you were talking about the football thing that just happened. Oh, maybe I'm not thinking of something. Did I, did I Debo Samuel something? just signed a three-year oh. contract with the 49ers for like $73 That's million. Right. That's right. Uh, but yeah, I mean, how do you guys feel about the Julio? Is it like he hasn't been the same Julio the last couple of years? But I mean, it's Julio Jones and Tom Brady. It feels like I think that's a work. like he's going to be amazing. He's not going to get like he's not going to get the same amount of attention or touches as he did in Atlanta. But Evans, Godwin, and Julio Jones, and oh, they have someone else who's good too. They did Russell Gage. Uh, what about uh, Godwin? Is he out all year though? I don't think he's out all year. Okay. I sure hope not because he carried me in fantasy last year. Yeah. I need <laughs> yeah. And well, I mean, what can you lose? You sign him for a one year deal. I don't know how many million, but it wasn't anything crazy. So, I mean, you're not losing. He's anything. still able. He yeah. can catch he's, the ball. He's a freak of an he's athlete. He's Julio so. Jones. Yeah. What you guys got? Did you see it wise? 
Um, I can go first. It was this one I thought was hilarious. It was an NIL deal. I sent this to you guys a while ago. Um, so SOS Heating and Cooling, I think it's in Nebraska. Yeah. Uh, they were exce- This is their tweet. It said, is excited to announce our new spokesperson, Huskers wide receiver, D. Coldest Crawford. If anyone knows which HVAC company is the coldest in Nebraska, it's him. You'll be seeing a lot more with him soon. That is like the best NIL deal I've seen. <laughs> and a cool name. Yeah. Is that your only one, Zach? Yeah, I only had one. Ooh, slacking today. I, know, I, I know. Like I was, three. Okay, I I'll do. I'll do. Uh, no, 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 no. You don't no, have no. to. No, no, um, no, 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 I'll, I'll go. Uh, so Notre Dame. Is Deshaun Watson's <laughs> ruling well, is going to happen tomorrow. If he's oh. how many games he gets suspended or anything. Okay. Um. So Notre Dame's Shamrock Series jerseys came out. Um. I don't. I don't think I mentioned it last episode. I, I saw something about it. On they're they're Twitter. sick. Like they're filthy. Um, they're like white, like shoulder pad design, like the baseball team has up here, and they're just like really clean. Um, mm, and then nice. the other one I sent it to you guys earlier, but it was this guy's been going around asking MLB players their max like bench and max squat and stuff. And Tyler O'Neill is standing there and is like compression shirt just absolutely jacked <laughs> he's like oh well, i've like lost weight in the past couple of years but i used to be able to squat like i don't do you guys remember what I it, think was? it was five plates on each side yeah i think he yeah. said he said five plates like two three squat. to four times not just once mm-hmm. and or yeah and then he said what three wait let me I see i'm watching i right thought now. it was a 425 it was bench. four wait let's see he's oh no eight. yeah yeah so it was a four four twenty five Four plates and 15 on each side. Yeah. No, that's 435. Right? And then he squats like yeah. a ton for like three to four reps. Yeah. <laughs> Five yeah, plates it's... on each side, three to four reps. Ridiculous. Yeah. Uh, those guys, though, they're, they're actually TikTokers, I guess. Uh, mm-hmm. They go, they do that stuff like all the time. I think they're located more in the Washington, like, uh, Baltimore region because everywhere I see they're in either Nationals Park or in Camden Yards. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they get they get some funny like uh, reactions from people. So I, I, it was cool to see the Cardinals uh, them interview some of them. And uh, last episode we did this new segment called the Pickle, and I don't know if that's what people were enjoying. Uh, and that's why our numbers were up to like a hundred these last couple episodes. Oh, but... I'm I'm sure. Like we only did it once, that's so it must true. have been yeah. something we did before. I know. Um, but I thought the pickle was fun last time. So let's get it going uh, again today. For anybody that doesn't know, we'll guess a player. We have nine guesses to guess the player of the day that MLB has put out. And uh, it gives us like clues along the way uh, team, age, division, stuff like that. So who you guys want to start off with? It's always good to start off with someone pretty broad. Hmm. hmm. Start with like a. I always start with like an Arenado or something like that. Just something to Austin Romine. Romine. Okay. <laughs> yeah, it's very big name right there. I'm 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 gonna do it though. So uh, all we Your got from is. it: bats right, throws right, um, and then a yellow in the division, which either means he's in the American League Central or in the National League. Does that make sense? Okay. Wait, what? So yellow is either he's in the American League Central because it's the NL Central, okay, or it's in the entire like East or uh, West in the National League. Okay, uh, gotcha. Oh, oh so I guess the one last time we got the division because we guessed the guy in that division. Like we guessed yes. the guy in the division of the person. Okay. Yes. Uh, he bats right, throws right. Not U. Not U.S. born. Not a catcher, and younger or older than thirty three. So out of the U.S., which um. Might help out a little bit. Out of the U.S. Edwin Diaz. Okay. He plays in the National League. Yeah. Okay. Uh, not the NL East. And it doesn't have a yellow, which makes me... I got that screwed up last time when I did it by myself. So yeah. I think that means it's in the American League or in American League Central. American League Central. It should be. That would make sense. sense. Yeah. And it's not, a, not Puerto Rico. Uh, there's a yellow in the 28 age mark, which either means he's either 30, 29 or 30, or 27 or 25, two years in between or after, before or after 28. 
Uh, it's not two years. It's not like within two years. So twenty-seven, twenty-six. Is that what, that's not what I said? You said twenty-seven, said. twenty-five. Okay, twenty-seven, twenty-six, and either or twenty-nine, confused. thirty. There you go. Bats right, throws right. Bats right, throws right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But there's not a yellow under the NLE, so we're thinking American League Central. I'm thinking Luis Robert. Okay. Oh, yeah. He's uh, like for the White Sox. Three though. Oh, that's right. He's young. Don't 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 press enter. I'm not. I'm not. I, I deleted it. Um, how old is Jose Abreu? He's he's a lot older. Remember, he's like 35. When oh, he came over, man. I remember us talking he's about even that. In the AL Central. What about like a Salvador Perez? Wait, is it not a catcher? It's not a catcher. Not That's a, a catcher. that was a good guess though. Dang. Um. Wait, why did you rule out Jose Abreu? Age? Yeah. Yeah, he's actually really old. Yeah, he's yeah. Old. a lot older than what. Okay, the Twins, seen. the Guardians. I was gonna. I mean, Jose Ramiro Reyes. Reyes. Okay, we can do What's that. Twenty twenty-five. Fra- Framil Reyes. No, wait, that'd be too young. How old do you think he is? He's not that old. But you can guess him if you want. I don't care. I'll do it. Just so we, I mean, remember we have so many guesses. Just try to get the team here. It is AL Central, not Cleveland, though. Uh, and then the yellow is not in the 27, which means it's got to be 20. 27. Mm-hmm. And it's not a DH, not Dominican Republic either. What the heck? That, that really narrows it down. Got to be Venezuela or what about Asian? Any Asian guys in AL Central? <sighs> so it's not Cleveland. The White Sox, Royals. Let's say if they're a switch hitter. Yeah, it's uh, bats right, throws right. I was thinking like Luis Arias, but he's he's lefty. Yeah. Um, why is the only Asian player in baseball I could think of Shohei Otani? There's got to be more than Shohei Otani. Stephen Kwan, he's a lefty though. Lefty. Is he yeah. A- yeah, he's Asian. He's Cleveland. So let's All think, right, so we um, got the Royal. I can't, I'm just trying to think of the teams right now. Yeah, <laughs> Royals. White Sox, Twins, Guardians, Tigers, Tigers. Tigers. We got right now. <laughs> oh yeah, he's too old. What about um Javi Baez? Yeah, do that. Where's he from? Venezuela. No, Puerto Rico. Really? Puerto Rico, I think. Okay, well I put it in. Uh, it is Puerto Rico, so that's wrong. Because he's not a short, friends with Yadi. It's not a shortstop. The yellow's in the twenty-nine, which means he has to be. 30 or 27 because we had the yellow and 28 earlier right okay yeah uh well, no it can't be 27 because we guessed the guy that was 27 already and it was right. yellow as well you're right so it's got to be 30 right or 26 right yes well is this one yellow now yeah oh yeah so this one's yellow so it has to be it can't be 26 so that's three years so it is the Tigers, though, oh. which help, helps narrow it down. Not Puerto Rico, though. Not a shortstop. Mm. Oh, man, I'm having a hard – I feel like there's going to be someone that we – Jonathan – ooh, Jonathan Scope. He's from, he from uh, the Bahamas. He's from, like, the like, Netherlands or something? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's Dutch. I like that. Let's go. I feel like you might have just gotten it, and you did. Mm. Bingo. On the fifth guess, Jonathan Scope. Yeah, Dang, that was a good he's... guess. How long did I'd it take trade for him? I was gonna say how long it take us last time, but it took us a really long last time because we had freaking Darren Ruff. Uh, yeah. so sweet. We can uh, keep the MLB going here. The Cardinals just won two out of three in Washington. Should have gotten all three. I had a couple uh, takeaways before I hand it off to you guys from the series. Uh, Zach, you you spoke on it, and Conlon, all of us have really spoken on it. Uh, the need of pitching depth. Uh, it, it's been kind of a rough patch here. O'Neill goes down with another injury. We were thinking maybe he's traded, uh, but it's just apparently cramps. Oh, I did so not think. I, I think he's he's not going to get traded. I wouldn't think so either. If someone's going to go, it's got to be Carlson, right? Mm-hmm. He's younger, uh, got a higher upside, I guess. And then my other takeaway was Palante was so good today. Eight innings, eight strikeouts, no runs. Uh, had a chance to go to the complete game, gave up a couple hits in the ninth, and uh, they took him out, but 
I mean, I don't know how much you guys got to watch of the series, but what would you guys take away from it? I watched the last two games. I got – I was tired of Bally Sports not working. So I uh, did the MLB TV subscription because it's like – was it was like $25 like for a year. Yeah. They like did a deal. So, yeah, I'm on the free trial so far. So I watched all the games. Tweeting. So that, that like uh, kind of proves the thing I was wondering earlier – couple months ago i guess as where as where are you blacked out uh with the cardinals because i can't watch i'm them blacked here. out for the marlins okay, i try perfect. to watch That's... one of their games <laughs> <laughs> yeah that makes that makes a lot more sense because i can't watch them on mlb I, I can't get certain royals games depending on where i'm at yeah here. that makes sense but any takeaways from that series would have been nice um, to win all three but yeah pitching let us down uh whatever yesterday was Saturday and I really wish Ollie would have just kept with Hicks against Soto and just instead of trying to put a lefties he put a lefty in every single time he came up and that's when uh they did all their damage because we walked him because we were too scared to throw a strike but uh our offenses looked good last night or yeah yesterday Every time the Nationals scored, we would kind of come back and take retake the lead or do something to at least, like, like respond, which was good to see. Arenado hit a homer. That was good. And then today, Dickerson going beast mode. Yeah. And then uh, Paul DeYoung, DeGoat, two homers in two games back. He's already doubled however many homers he already had. Uh, I feel, I feel so game. good for him, guys. Oh, same. I, I didn't think he was going to make it back, honestly, with us. Uh, I just thought we were too deep. But, yeah, I thought that was really good to see him. That's one big takeaway that I didn't put down that, I didn't put down that was uh, really big. Um, I guess, I mean, unless you guys have anything else about the series, we have – Helsley against Soto. Oh. His, like, his pitch to strike him out, that 102 fastball just on the outside edge was one of the most beautiful pitches I've ever seen. And I think the pitch before that, Soto is a guy that has tremendous like zone coverage. Like he he knows when not to swing. Did you see the stat on the broadcast today? Oh, you can say that after you finish. He has well, eighty seven walks, and the next closest is sixty five. Wow! In MLB yeah. this year, that's I didn't, crazy. I didn't see that by Max yeah. Muncie. He, <laughs> I'd be pitching to him. <laughs> I was going to talk about that slider. I don't know if you saw the slider that he threw uh, before that one hundred two fastball. It made Soto look ridiculous. Oh yeah, like, like hit. Five feet in front of the plate. Yeah, and he and he swung, and it was just nasty. Helsley, one of you guys sent it in the chat earlier uh, about Helsley's last month's stats. Did, yeah. but is that you? Yeah, that was. Yeah, it's that just was he's crazy. been. It's I like, told my dad when watching the zero. game, there's not many guys I trust more. If you asked me a month ago, I probably would have said Hater. Not anymore. So I, I mean, I have to think about probably maybe two guys I could maybe say that I trust Sandy, more because he just pitches the whole game. <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> I was gonna say uh, Edwin Diaz for the Mets. He's been pretty filthy, and you guys. Speaking have seen that. of Edwin Diaz, he has the coolest entrance yeah. ever. I think didn't Conlon send that be, uh, like right at the beginning of it when it was happening? Do you remember sending that? The trumpets. Yeah, I don't and, he, that. and it's like yeah, it's it's pretty lit. Not gonna lie. Yeah, it's crazy. Um, it it gives guess, me vibes. You remember when uh, Carlos Martinez would enter in? Oh yeah, that was actually pretty cool too. Oh yeah, I can't believe you know. I always forget. Carlos was a closer for like a short period of time. Yeah. And also, we didn't, I don't know if we ever talked about him. He, uh, I guess it's just, he's not on a team right now, but he's no, he suspend, suspended. Yeah. For performance enhancing drugs. Like, what was he enhancing? <laughs> That's my question. Getting like, fat. what was he like? I don't know. Um, I guess but even, we should mention Sosa got traded too. Yeah. That's true. I forgot about Sosa already. Um, <laughs> Short memory. <laughs> I know, seriously. Which, you know, I saw his stats and they really weren't good, but it seemed like he was better than that. And also, to me at least, and it, he didn't seem like he played like at all. You know? Yeah. Like he didn't really get an opportunity um, unlike last year because we were so deep. Donovan just stole it from him. Exactly. Basically. exactly. Um, I saw something today, today where we have out of our like 58 or 60 games, however many games are left, we have um, like 19 against teams lower than 500 
and then or above above 500. Mm-hmm. So it's like a super. I mean, we talked about it before. We have the easy schedule, schedule out of any team. Yeah, and I think they said we play the Cubs like 11 times. We play the Nationals like seven times. Like we just have to take care of our own business, and we'll be just fine. So that, that's a good thing to look forward to. But um, the biggest MLB thing we got to get to really quick is uh, the trade deadline. Uh, that is two days away. So I just wanted to go th- through three names, three probably the biggest names. I wrote down just, a ton of names. Good, because I, I, I had a feeling that you would, so that's why I didn't put a ton. But Juan, where do you think Juan Soto is going to be, guys? Um, My gut feeling says he's going to be with us. I just Unfortunately, not- I think he's going to be with us. And I, I'm still against it. Like, yeah, he's a good hitter, but he also can't pitch. Yeah. Like, yes, we could get a pitcher, but it's not going to be as elite as if we don't. Exactly. I don't, I, I honestly am not, I don't want Montes anymore because really? his shoulder, his shoulder injury. Uh huh. I'm on full board, Pablo Lopez, 26, three years younger. You get him for like a couple more years. Yeah. And he's had just over three ERA his last two years, counting this year. You probably wouldn't have to give as much for him for, as you would Montes, too. I don't know. Maybe he's younger. <laughs> they, yeah, the younger and the years of uh, control. His ERA of. is just as good. I just yeah. don't, his strikeout, I think, just a little high, lower, but it's probably higher than everyone on our team. <laughs> the good thing about the pitching is that no matter what you get, I don't think you have to give up Walker. I think Gorman would be the main piece. Um, Walker like also either. Hit, wait, go ahead. Walker hit his 11th homer today. I posted I that. that on our Instagram and. Yeah, dude, dude's uh he had two two nights ago, he had two homers and Mason Wynn had a homer. They hit back to back. So but I, I don't know if you would even have to give up Mason Wynn for a Pablo Lopez. I think you could probably get away with Gorman Burleson and Libertor or something like that. Yeah. I feel like that. I'd, that I'd go like Libertor and I, I think the Marlins want bats, so maybe do like Libertor and Burleson for your first offer to say, Hey, yeah. Take it. Take your leave yeah. it. No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um Another but name. I, I just think Pablo Lopez is young. Even if we get Pablo Lopez, my like dream scenario is get like two starters that are like good or solid. Yeah. One, I'd get Pablo Lopez. Frankie Montes, if his shoulder isn't, if his shoulder is like for sure good and you don't have to give up too much, or just get like um, a guy who's a shorter, like you won't have him as for under it have him for as long as Pablo yeah. Lopez. Like, he'll have him for under team control for a while. Get a Martin Perez, who's older. Mm-hmm. Or, uh, I don't know Tyler and my- Molly's situation, but I heard mm-hmm. we're interested in him now because he's mm-hmm. been pitching good lately. Yeah. Or or just say, screw it and get Tariq Scooball and get two young guys who are under yeah. control and just add him to a rotation. Yeah, we also need someone who's going to lock up the bullpen a little bit more. Yeah, I so that. we have a good amount of pitching holes to fill. Yeah, this whole this entire time, I was thinking, when like I was I was picturing Matt's coming back healthy. I was being optimistic about Flaherty coming back, and I was thinking we don't really need that much bullpen help because you could put Palante out there, and he's shown he could pitch in the bullpen. But now that Matt's is probably done. I mean, until maybe the end of the year, and then yeah. Flaherty could be actually done. Um, Palante is like innings. solidifying himself as a starter. Yeah. So, and it's crazy to me to think that last year in the summer, I, I was in Springfield and I went to a double A game and Palante was pitching and he was throwing like 99 or, and I was like, hey, this guy ain't that bad. And then now he's like, screw yeah. triple A. I'm just going to start in the MLB and almost throw a complete game. Yeah. It's unbelievable. And, you know, Zach, Conlon just mentioned the bullpen, and I, I'm leaning towards. I don't know a whole lot of bullpen arms that are available. I need to look more on that. Mm-hmm. But Joe Mantle apply for the Diamondbacks you mentioned mm-hmm. seems like a such a cardinal pick. And yeah. I, I, you would not have to give up much for him at yeah, all. I agree. That might be a Burleson for yeah. him. Something yeah, like that. Yeah, I like dream scenario: two starters, good. If both are under team control for a while and show promise, yeah, like Paul Lopez, Tariq Scooball, or Paul Lopez and Frankie Montes, what the heck? Yeah. And then just throw in uh, like a reliever who's like proven to be solid. Get like maybe a Octavio Dotel or Marcus Chimsky <laughs> type. Yeah. Uh, well, Dotel might be. Dotel might still be around somewhere. He yeah, he's for played like for like twenty every team. years. Um, 
what makes me think Soto's coming here is because the I know I we all agree we have the depth. Uh Yepes, Burleson, probably you could call up if you needed. I think Mosaloc thinks Bader's in a boot still for the next couple of weeks. He's gonna be a while. Uh, they're optimistic he'll play again. O'Neill has the stuff to be a tremendous player like we saw last year, but he's so like he hasn't played well when he's been on the field really. And I then think he keeps, he's too in shape. He could be, man. He, like we've seen toned. that. Yeah, he literally. Well, he lost a bunch of weight the last couple of years, and said he really worked on like his flexibility and his mobility. Because when he was striking out so much, this was before last year when he had. And last year, obviously, he had a hell of a season. Or was that yeah. two years ago? That was last. That year. That was last year. And before that, he was striking out all the time, and then he lost a bunch of weight and worked on like mobility stuff. And uh, last year was fantastic, but. Yeah, it just seems bad. like he keeps tweaking great. stuff, and yeah. yeah. So right now you really have Carlson, and then Newpar has been playing really well. Yeah, um, been. Dickerson's but, been playing well. He's been hitting three hundred the last nine games, I think, which is think, good. He's been he's his career has been a good hitter, and this is kind of the Dickerson mm-hmm. we were thinking of just just hits and play solid defense. Yeah, I I just I can see Mosellock saying he doesn't want to go with Dickerson, Newpar, and Carlson, and he wants. That big Soto name, yeah. Uh, which I I think no matter what we are getting a starter, it's just about who we get because they even said who's our we're running with a four man rotation right now, and they said yeah. who's going to be our fifth starter, and they said we don't have him currently on the team. That's what I think Ali or Mo said that. Mm-hmm. So obviously we're getting somebody. I I mentioned to you guys Jake Odorizzi seems like a really cheap guy from the Astros. We could get Astros. He's, he's from this location also. My cousin actually. But will the Astros him trade him? Do they need him? They are more focused on uh, hitting depth and, and like, uh, they really need a first baseman. Uh, Guriel for them has really not played well, and so they've been talking about Josh Bell. I keep seeing that everywhere. But that could be just coming off the dome here. That could be a, a spot for, like, a Juan Yepes, uh, that type of, that type of um, deal. And then they have a lot of pitching already. Framber Valdez yeah. has been really good. Verlander, obviously. Uh, they have a Luis Garcia that's been really good. I don't know the – you guys remember um, Lance McCullers? Remember that yeah, name? Yeah, he's good. Yeah. yeah. I haven't seen him at all. I think he's He's been him. hurt. They yeah. have like six very good – or six very good starters, and then someone's coming off the IR soon. Yeah, yeah. Uh, McCullers. So that's why I think they're okay with giving up Oda Rizzi. I know, but like at the same time, I just feel like it's kind of nice to have – a team that's going to make a run in the playoffs, like for sure going to make it, to have like a long inning guy in the bullpen just in mm-hmm. case. Yeah. Like, and they're really be, like, hot. I know everybody's <coughs> high on the Yankees, and we can talk about more of this in weeks to come, but the Astros are really getting high on my list for favorites because their bullpen's the best in baseball this year. Uh, and their closer, Ryan Presley, which we ranked in our top 10, I think in the latter part of the top 10, he just – lost his uh, streak of 30, what was it? I want to say 36 batters in a row he got out. And he's just been literally lights out in the back end of their bullpen for them. But let's get back to the more of the tread deadline here. My other name was Wilson Contreras. I said the Astros, but Zach, you even mentioned last week Maldonado, Maldonado is really, uh, even though he can't hit for anything, really controls that staff well and defensively. And I, you said that, and then literally that night, Ken Rosenthal was saying that. So... Um, I yeah, mean, Ken Rosenthal gets his information from me. <laughs> I was waiting for it. Um, I'm leaning more towards the Mets now. They need a catcher I, really bad. I, I don't even think, even if he goes to the Mets, he may not even catch. He may just DH. Yeah. Because they need a hitter. Definitely. And, and I, I also, think there's a stat where he hit, he's, hits better when he DHs instead of catching. Yeah. I, I also, reminding me of the what you just said about Ken Rosenthal, I, I told a buddy earlier, um, my gut is telling me Juan Soto to the Cardinals, like I said. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but I guess I typoed it and I said my guy. And so he was like, what connections do you got? <laughs> He's like, <"You're, laughs> you, you and uh, Zach and Colin are making progress already. Yeah. I was laughing pretty hard. Um, my third name was Frankie Montes. Luis Castillo, I was going to talk about Luis Castillo to the Mariners and a huge deal that I think the Mariners might, if they don't do anything this year, might regret because Castillo's a free agent at the end of the year and they yeah. gave up a lot of prospects. Um, I don't, I, yeah, I'm, I'm not a fan of that for the Mariners. Exactly. So 
Frankie Montes is like the, I guess, the name now available. And I, I all everything that was uh, about Luis Castillo was that he was going to the Yankees, which leads me to say the they have so many prospects that Frankie Montes could be a Yankee. They, I, I heard, yeah, from my, from my, my guy, uh, <laughs> he said uh, the Yankees didn't. The the Reds wanted Volpe, Volpe, and mm-hmm. the Yankees didn't want to get rid of him. So they're like, yeah, we're not doing that. For for Montes? No, for uh, Castillo. For Castillo. Okay. Yeah, I don't know. He's. I mean, do you guys have a spot that you think he's going to go? Who, Montes? Yeah. Um, got to help here. Mm-hmm. We need help. Yeah. Um, and he's got, he, I think he's under contract through next year, and then he's a free agent. Okay, so like Castillo. Or Castillo's done after this year, I think. No, he is mm-hmm. next year too. Oh, does he? Mm-hmm. That's a little better. I thought he was literally done after this year. No, he has one more year. Okay. I could see the Yankees getting involved. Us. Um, I've heard people say the Twins even. They need pitching. Yeah. Even. I've heard some people even say the Astros too, which wouldn't mm-hmm. make sense. But heck, more the merrier. Pitching is one of those things in the postseason you, you can't get enough of. Especially, yeah, because especially postseason, it's completely different regular season. It's like throw four innings and then you they got a hit off you, must take you out. Yeah, it, it's completely different. Um, those are my three big other, names, I guess. What, yeah. are, what are some other names you put down? Um, Ian Happ. He's had like a really good year so far, switch hitter. Mm-hmm. Um, he could be a big piece for – a lot of teams um because and now these two names next because the red sox have been like sliding and they may sell so yeah. jd martinez is a team as a name and bogarts mm-hmm. which those guys are elite hitters like the best like best in the league basically they are just so consistent and um hopefully they don't go to the brewers because the brewers are looking for a, a bat and um so I'll go so, Josh Bell. He's on the list. Um, so Bogart said in an interview, he's not being traded. Like he said, they told him no. So oh, yeah. that that leads me to say their GM, which I don't remember his name, said no to Bogarts and no to who's the other? Oh, Devers, Devers. obviously. So that means that he didn't say anything about JD. And you mentioned the Brewers with Josh Bell, which we've mentioned before. JD to the Brewers makes a lot of sense. Oh, like, if I was they, the Brewers, I would do it. That makes a lot of sense. It kind of worries me, actually. A yeah, bit. He, would, he would upgrade that team. Considering so that I was looking at the, the standings, and we're four games back from the Brewers, or maybe three and a half now, yeah, or three, depending on what they did today. But I think I think they lost today. So three. Our run differential is plus 62. Theirs is like 40, and we are just cannot. It, it's just frustrating. Very. But I, mean, I think that's where us having that easy schedule will really help out. I think it'll pay off at the end. But and continue. just get some – more consistent pitching. Yep. Um. So Bogart's off the list. I'm going to delete him right now. Like it even matters. <laughs> um, Frankie Montes, Pablo Lopez, mm-hmm. um, Sean Murphy. I think could be super key for a team who picks him up because I think he has years of control, and he's a guy who plays elite defense. He won the Gold Glove, and he could hit 30 home runs for you in a year. Mm-hmm. So. Like, whoever gets them is going to have, like, a stud catcher for years to come. And honestly, if we go for Frankie Montes, if they just want to throw in Sean Murphy, too, I'm not opposed. Yeah. Yep. Um, Brian Reynolds could be on the move. I didn't think about him. That's true. Uh, Josh Bell mentioned him. Uh, Trey Mancini has been linked to some teams as a DH. I think maybe even the Brewers, too, or really a lot of teams who just need a, a bat. I think the Mets – um have considered him uh i think so yeah there's not um, a lot of superstars like there's soto but there's a lot of stars and i think there's going to be uh mosaic was live on the telecast today and he said it's going to be like a pretty exciting 36 hours next 30 yeah. i think there's going to be a lot of deals made i, yeah, I, mean, I think a couple so too. couple weeks ago i said i think it's going to be a pretty weak one and you guys said well it's probably going to be i mean every trade deadline's busy and it's you guys are right. I mean, it's going to be a busy deadline. Yeah, I was all these names, names came out of nowhere. I just like kept kept typing away. Yeah. Um. So I have Tariq Skubal, who I mentioned earlier, Brandon Drury, who I think will be a good pickup for whoever 
um, picks him up because he's been having a great year, breakout year. Will that continue for the rest of his career? Most likely not. Yeah. Um, Martin Perez, but at the same time, the Rangers were in, were considering trading for Soto. They just didn't have as much. So I don't know if the Rangers are trying to, like, I don't even know what their record is, if they're trying to make a push or what. Because I thought they were interested in Montes too, maybe. I think they're like six under now. There's no way they make the playoffs. (laughs) Okay. Sorry, I'm still here. I'm just like, (laughs) I haven't ate dinner. I haven't ate since like two, so I'm starving. So I'm like whipping (laughs) stuff up. Chef Conlon. Dude, I've actually, not to flex on myself, but absolutely to flex on myself, I can flat freaking cook. So, no Anyone deal. needs a man to cook. No, I'm seriously. I, you guys see it every, every time I look. Well, not every time, because it's every time I cook, it's great. But every once in a while, I'll throw like a picture of my food on my Snap story. And I'm like, application updated, right? That's my yeah. application to be a stay at home dad. <laughs> So, right dream on. job. Yeah. Uh, where are we at, Zach? How, how many names you got left? Uh, I got two. Cindergard, who I could see as, like, if we'd get, like, a Pablo Lopez or Frankie Montes, and then we need another guy, I don't really want Cindergard, but he's here. He, he, we'd only be here for, like, the end of the year, and then I would not resign him. Yeah. Um, And then Tyler Molly. There's probably yeah. other people, but I – Got tired of typing all these names. I would say there's a 90% chance all of those names are, are go- going somewhere. Yeah, I think a lot of them could be gone. Yeah, which it's going to get crazy. Because really the only thing so far has been Luis Castillo and then like Tyler Naquin was traded from the Reds to the Mets. That and has been pretty much... Sosa. And Sosa, yeah. But that, that's pretty much been it. Like Also, I think Jose Quint- Quintana. Quintana's oh, gonna yeah. Be Quintana. Yeah. 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 Also, I was kind of thinking about this. Our trade with the Phillies, like, yeah, it makes sense to make room, but at the same time, we're fighting with them for a wild card spot. Yeah. I was like, uh, and their middle the infield team. sometimes is uh, Munoz and Sosa now, <laughs> for, former Cardinals. But yeah, it's going to be a crazy next couple days or day and a half here. Um, if you have, are not following our Instagram already, I will be keeping up with everything and posting every single deal that goes down like NHL happens. I will tweet everything, even if I'm at work. I'm kidding. Yes. <laughs> I will not. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, follow us on Instagram because uh, I'll be posting everything up to date there. But uh, there was one NHL deal that went down that I guess is something. John Klingberg's off the board. I don't know if you can hear us, Conlon, back there. Can you hear me? You did. Yeah, I can hear you. Ooh, nice sound. Uh, <laughs> Uh, John Klingberg's off the board. I don't know if you saw that. Uh, I might. I don't know. Where'd he go? Oh, ducks. Uh, old <laughs> yeah. Johnny. Honestly, yeah. they're actually kind of building a team. So you know, I was gonna tell you guys that. I, I'm I'm feeling pretty good about them. Don't they I don't have know that how soon, guy? but they're building a team. Yeah. There was there. Yeah, they do. There was. I have to uh, say about Zegers is that uh, skills showdown when he did the blindfolded spin around shoot thing. I uh, was like, <laughs> oh my god. Yeah, he's talented. Uh, and he yeah, didn't nothing, win, which is stupid. Nothing much NHL-wise that I could think of. Um, and then NBA, we have nothing right now. NBA's gone stagnant. There's no Kevin Durant drama. What? Oh, my gosh, man. It was today. I'm sorry. I didn't put it down. It was today. It was today. That should have been my did you see it. That should have been in my intro, actually. I'm I'm very disappointed in myself. Do you yeah, want to break the news be. or? Well, classic AJ Lakers fan. Doesn't my show bad. respect. <laughs> Um, all-time great Bill Russell passed away today. Yeah. I think it was just of natural causes or passed peacefully. So that's, that's good, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, uh, yeah, I'm yeah. beating myself up over that one. I should have put that one at the beginning, but like 11 time NBA champion couldn't, didn't have enough fingers to put all his rings on. He, uh, I saw something, he was 21 and oh, in like deciding games or, or yeah, yeah. Serious deciding games or something. Yeah. Yeah. And he averaged like 29 rebounds in all those games. He was 11 and 0 in game sevens. Yeah, I mean, legend. Five time MVP. Yeah. And, you know, he always seemed, and one of my buddies texted me this, he always seemed um, mentally there, but yeah. he looked frail because he was so yeah. old, obviously. And being seven foot and being, I mean, it, that all that strain on your body, it's yeah. just not he's natural. He's 88 years old, yeah. so he lived yeah. for a long time. I don't know how old Kareem is, but every time I see him, I get a little worried. He seems yeah. uh, kind of bent over and, and frail because he's what seven two or something like that. So yeah, he's he's so lanky too. Yeah, 
But we have some football to uh, finish up the episode here. Let's start with college football. Let's go. Um, how do you, you want to give your 10 and then Colin and I hop in? Or I think that's what we did last time. We're going to go, we, go down to three. Yeah. You guys only, you guys both did only three. I did three. Yeah. <laughs> well, I could tell you my, like, the three best are pretty simple. Yeah. Um, I guess I'll do a mine. I even pulled up their stats too. So, uh, <laughs> yeah, I went, uh, um, beast mode, I guess. So, okay, I gotta get ready for my talking <laughs> right now. Okay. Um, so my number 10 is Tyler Van Dyke for Miami. He was a freshman last year and, uh, he didn't start right away because they had Derek King as their quarterback, but then Derek King got hurt. And so Tyler Van Dyke became their quarterback and he played really good for them. He played 10 games last year. He threw for 2,931 yards, had 25 touchdowns and six interceptions, which is pretty dang good for a freshman. Um, so I think he's going to be really good this year and uh, pose a problem for in the ACC. Um, my number nine is I don't like this guy at all, but I think he's going to be good. He has the talent. And he's on a team I don't like either, but I'll put him here. Uh, Spencer Rattler on the probably the okay. third South. best team in South Carolina. Oh. Yeah, it's Clemson, then Coastal, <laughs> then uh, South Carolina. No disrespect. <laughs> <laughs> um, but uh, last year, obviously, everyone knows he did not play great. He got benched for Caleb Williams. Um, last year in nine games, he threw for – uh, 1,400 yards, had 11 touchdowns, five interceptions. Not great. The year before, he threw for 3,000 yards, had 28 touchdowns, seven interceptions. But I think he's going to bounce back. I think um, I think uh, South Carolina's coach, Beamer, I think. Yeah, Beamer. Um, I think he's, making, he's turning their program in the right direction, unfortunately. Well, actually, I kind of like it. So now the rivalry games every year between them and Clemson, it won't be us shutting them out every time <laughs> um so like could actually like watch the games after the first quarter <laughs> but uh yeah i think it'll be good um number eight is oh look another acc guy people talking bad about the acc just look at our <laughs> quarterbacks um sam hartman of wake forest uh he had an insanely good year last year he threw for 4228 yards 39 touchdowns and 14 interceptions and he also, I felt like he rushed. Oh, he had 364 yards rushing. Um, he was elite last year and really helped Wake Forest have one of their best records in school history. I think they had like 11 wins. Um, literally, they play good against everyone except us, and they look like they cannot play football. I told you about their like weird mm -hmm. offense where they hold the mesh between the running back and quarterback for a really long time. And then they'll like either run or he'll hand it off, run or something. But uh, I think he's gonna have another good year. He's he's this is gonna be his fifth year. Yeah, I think he's gonna be like a fifth year junior because he redshirted wow. and then with COVID. So, jeez, <laughs> don't know how that really works. But <laughs> um, so then my number ten, nine, eight, seven, number seven is Grayson McCall from Coastal Carolina. Coastal Carolina, not a power five, don't get as much love, but Grayson McCall has been extremely good these last two years. As a freshman, um, people remember he beat Zach Wilson um, at Coastal Carolina. Um, and his freshman year, he threw for 2,500 yards, had 26 touchdowns, three interceptions. Um, last year, he had 2,800 yards. 27 touchdowns, three interceptions. So he takes care of the ball, does the job, does his job. Um, he ran for 290 yards last year. His freshman year ran for 569. So he just commands the offense and just um they just win. Like he's kind of turned coastal around. Yeah. And they have a really cool field. It's like teal. Mm -hmm. Um, so number six, Mizzou's rival, <clears throat> not their true rival, their made up rival after they joined the SEC. Arkansas, KJ Jefferson. He was really good last year. His stats weren't like his passing. They're actually pretty good. They weren't like a ton of yards, but he threw for 2,600 yards, 21 touchdowns, four interceptions, and he ran for 664 yards, and he 
rushed for six touchdowns. This guy's a tank. He's 6'3", 245 pounds, and he's just – I really like watching him play. He's really good. And Arkansas's kind of turning around. They were uh, not doing great the last few years, but last year they had a really good year. I believe they had 10 wins, 9 or 10, maybe even more. Mm-hmm. I was going to look up the wins totals, but I didn't. Yeah. But I think he's going to be even better this year. He was only a sophomore last year, so – um only going up from there, I guess. And then number one, two, three, four, five. Number five, another ACC quarterback that is three. At the end of the year, it'd be DJ in there too. <laughs> um, probably Cade Klubnik, but um, it's Devin Leary from North Carolina State, which North Carolina State's predicted to be really good this year. Um, I will be going to that game when they play in Clemson. I'm excited for that. Huh. Um, but last year he you had mean like really good. Like what? relative to the rest of the ACC, or just like really good in general. So those are North real Carolina big. State. Yeah, they people like ranking them have been ranking them like top ten, some or like top fifteen to this year. Yeah. Okay. There's a lot of good ACC quarterbacks and teams this year. I think I think the ACC is going to be stronger. Um, exactly. What'd you say? So let's not get carried away. No, like. <laughs> Yeah, there are some solid teams. Like they're not going to be like as good as like Alabama, obviously, or like any of the other SEC schools. But I think we'll be better. Um, but he threw for three thousand four hundred thirty-three yards last year, thirty-five touchdowns and five interceptions, which is uh, pretty dang good. And he was a sophomore last year, and I think he's going to have just as good of a season this year. Um, so number four, a guy who I don't think a lot of people really know of maybe they do i'm not sure is uh hendon hooker of of tennessee he had a really good sneaky year last year for uh tennessee um i think he's gonna be a fifth year senior yeah he threw for 2900 yards last year 31 touchdowns and three interceptions so he uh really took care of the ball in the sec which is really good defenses and he ran, or yeah, he ran for 616 yards from five touchdowns. So dual threat guy. And now I'm, I'm at three. You guys do your three because my voice, my mouth is dry. I, I can get mine, uh, my three out of the way real quick. And I know my number two. Now that now hearing your list, you're really gonna hate it. My number three is CJ CJ Stroud. Stroud? How do you say that? Stroud. Stroud. He was electric last year at Ohio State. And uh, I don't know what year is he now. Is he a junior? Um, he's a sophomore. Okay. Last and year he was a freshman. You have to, you have to be, or a he a redshirt freshman. You have to be a junior to enter the draft, right? At least. Yeah, you have to be played there three years, so you could be a redshirt sophomore. After your redshirt sophomore year, you could leave or your junior year. Yeah. Okay. So I think he's uh, going to have another tremendous year at Ohio State. My number two, I I don't even know if I'm ranking like best quarterbacks. But most, like, exciting and, like, must-watch, I think Spencer Rattler is going to be must-watch. And I think it's because he's coming off where he was supposed to be, like, a tremendous, tremendous quarterback at Oklahoma. Wait. You watch college football? (laughs) No, no, no. I'm not saying best, like, top three quarterback. I'm just saying he was, he was, what was he, number one uh, recruit out of high school? He was top five, wasn't he, at least? I think he was one of the top quarterback, at least. And then oh, the whole Oklahoma thing happened. It was like a mess. So I, I'm not saying he's even in the same level as Stroud and Young. Bryce Young is my number one. But I think Spencer, I'm, I'm not a huge college football guy like you guys are. I'm going to try to get more into it this year because you guys talk about it more uh, as we talk about it more. But I just don't like Spencer Rattler. He wore like a too. necklace. Yeah, I just don't like him. Me? He's cocky. He's kind of ugly too. He is. Yeah, <laughs> Rattler, he is. Rattler is my number two and Bryce Young's my number one. Like, I, I, I probably should have just put him third if I was going to do that because Stroud's oh. better. But I think Rattler, for me, uh, is going to – I, I want to see how he does because I thought he was going to light up Oklahoma, and that was just a mess. But, yeah, Bryce Young's my number one. I think he's going to be the best quarterback taken in the draft unless something happens throughout the year. Um, could be a future Seahawk. We'll see how that goes. But uh, what, do you guys, what do you guys got? <laughs> I three. I have a kid from Coastal Carolina. <laughs> I have Grayson McCall. He's really he's, – he's been so good. Like, I have no problem with him being that high. 
Two, I have C.J. Stroud, and one, I have Bryce Young. Like, pretty I feel easy. like the, these last few years, the quarterbacks are, like, really good, but it's not like the years past where it's, like, I don't know how to explain it, where there's just like – gen- it seems like all the top talent. teams just had, like, Trevor Lawrence, Tua. Uh, yeah. Whoever – who had – Justin Fields, like guys who are like, oh, oh, dang. Ian yeah. Buck. Yeah, Ian Buck. <laughs> he was good. Um, So my three, my number three is uh Caleb Williams, who took Spencer Rattler's job. I think he's going to be really good in USC. Um, He kind of, he started off good, and then I think it kind of slowed down a little bit because he played 11 games last year, only had 1,900 yards, 21 touchdowns, four interceptions. So he did take care of the ball. And he was also a dual threat. He ran for 442 yards. And then I think the top two are just, like, they are the top two. Like, like yeah. AJ, because he doesn't watch college football, didn't know <laughs> this, but they're for sure, without a doubt, the top two. I, I will I will admit, I know Stroud's better, so I should have I should have put him there. But here, here, I'll yeah. tell you his stats, too, just to reiterate it. Um, so yeah, CJ Stroud, crazy. as a freshman at Ohio State, which with two really good receivers, um, he threw for 4,435 yards, 44 touchdowns, and only six interceptions. It's, it's insane. It's ridiculous. Yeah. And the number one is the Heisman winner, obviously, Bryce Young. He threw for almost 5,000 yards, 4,872, 47 touchdowns, and seven interceptions. And it's kind of these top two quarterbacks, a lot of the top quarterbacks have been like, and previous years have been really dual threat guys who can get a lot when the Heisman, but these guys, they are just more like pocket passers. They don't rush for that many yards, which mm-hmm. I, I, they're athletic, but they choose to throw over like scramble. Yeah. Yeah. It, it's probably better for their health too. I mean, we saw Lamar has made it work so far, but some of these other guys, the one name that I, I thought his potential was unreal was RG three. Yeah. And I'm, I'm still disappointed that didn't work out. Oh, that he was so Washington. fun to watch in college. He ran like track too. Yeah. Um, I do have some honorable mentions. I will say mm-hmm. they're like freshmen, so I wasn't gonna rank them. But uh, Jackson Dart for Ole Miss. He's transferred from USC. One, he's a cool name, and two, you or <laughs> Ole Miss. They've been really good, and their offense has been good under Lane Kiffin. And then uh, Quinn Ear Evers. Evers. He's at Texas. He was at Ohio State last year as a freshman. And then transferred to Texas, but I think he'll be good. He just seems like a a gunslinger. He has a really bad mullet and creepy mustache. Yeah. But who was that? Te- who was that Texas quarterback that was there for like six years? What was his name? Sam name? Ellinger. 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 Yeah. Yeah. He was good. Um, I have like five, no, seven minutes before I have to go get Hannah, and if I, if I don't get there on time, she's gonna murder me. So unless you guys have anything else, college football, we'll get definitely get more rankings coming up in the next few weeks and stuff like that. Um, let's move on. Anything to say about training camps that has begun? And uh, Oh, yeah. I don't know. I NFL. The first, the Hall of Fame football, football is back this week, actually. <laughs> the Hall of Fame game is Thursday. The Jaguars versus, I don't remember who they're playing. I'll look it up. Hall of Fame game <laughs> 2022. But I, I just saw it and it just got me kind of excited. I, uh, I follow like Scott Hansen on uh, Twitter Mm -hmm. and Instagram. If you know him, if you know who he is, you're a true NFL fan. Yep. And he was like five Sundays till seven hours of commercial free football. I'm just kind of very excited. I was never, I was never on that. And I think last year you told me about that and I was completely. It is the greatest thing ever. You could sit on your couch for seven hours and all you watch is football. It's It's pretty amazing. amazing. Yeah. Except when the Cowboys are on, then I do watch them until I get stressed out and I don't, (laughs) but yeah. Getting back on track to not yeah. depress myself. Uh-huh. Um, the Jaguars, my second favorite team now, um, and future Hall of Famer Trevor Lawrence take on um, Derek Carr Raiders. and the Raiders in the, the Hall of Fame game, which is honestly super boring because the starters don't even play. So, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, what is preseason like this year? Three, only three games, right? Yeah, I think it's only three games. I like that more. Um, I don't even. I don't even watch the preseason. Don't I don't care. either. I just I look to see if the Seahawks have any injuries, really. <laughs> yeah, I just look and see how like the rookies do in yeah. their like ten plays. Yeah, exactly. Um, should we move on to the Patriots? Ooh, also one quick thing on training camp. I yeah. love on training camp because people are always tweeting, 
oh, uh, it's always so funny. <laughs> I don't know why this always makes me laugh. They're like, oh, Baker Mayfield and uh, scrimmage doing an interception or yeah, Aaron Rodgers and scrimmage doing an interception. Then everyone's like freaks out. They're like, oh my God, he's not good. Anymore. I know. Yeah. I mean, I, I saw the one that was going viral was Kyle Hamilton, the Notre Dame safety. He, I guess, got blown up on this like coverage, and literally the guy was wide open downfield, and he was it was like twenty yards different. Why are you doing that to Conlon? <laughs> I was gonna say that was like a viral one that it, like your point where I will say like Clemson people though player. they will notice that about Andrew Booth he uh, intercepted one on Kirk Cousins, and he was covering uh, whatever the good receiver is Jefferson, Jay Jettas. So, yeah, yeah. So the New Eng- New England pages are. Oh my gosh. New England Patriots are our next team. Um, I have them at nine and eight. Uh, what are you guys thinking? Like I said before, I did not do my homework, but yeah. I, without even looking, I, I can, I, I'm just going to agree with you because yeah. I feel like that's what that their team just seems like a team that's going to be around 500. Yeah. Yeah. Conlon, can you hear us? Conlon? Maybe not. His house may be burned down. I can hear you. <laughs> I just had raw chicken booby on my hand. Oh, uh, what do you got for the Patriots? I don't have a record, but I don't think they'll be a playoff team. I think they'll be borderline and fighting to for, fighting to the end to get to the playoffs, but they will not make the playoffs. I, I, I agree, agree with that. I think I can yeah. See, yeah, I agree with that. Yeah, it's like yeah, five hundred. <laughs> I heard Mac Jones is in shape, <laughs> which which helps them out. I uh, heard he really slimmed down, so um, he's like still on. Un- <laughs> Did you see? Uh, Leonard Fournette came to training camp like 40 pounds overweight. <laughs> yes, it, it gave me Eddie the, Lacy vibes. Did you see the Twitter stuff when he was, uh, they're all like, oh, sorry. Uh, he was, they're all like talking to him about his weight and then he's like, see you September 11th. Oh, <laughs> and everyone's like, if you don't know. <laughs> I don't know why it just cracked me up. Um, but I think that the, uh, the Devontae Parker signing is huge for them. They really lack some wide receiver depth, and that helps out. And then I think their backfield is so talented. Damian they uh, signed Kendrick Bourne, too, from the 49ers. Yeah. Solid. But, I mean, that helps them out, too. Um, but, yeah, Damian Harris and Ramondre, I think is how you say it. Yeah, Steve Ramondre. Stevenson. Yeah, I think their backfield is really White. good. Yeah. Oh, they yeah, also I, have uh, – this is going to be their key wide receiver. He's linked as their third string number one. Little Jordan Humphrey. Little Jordan from New Orleans, yeah. yeah um, Texas. But really where they hang their hat on is defense. Second last year in all football. And honestly, besides McCourty and Judon, I don't know a lot of their names, but I know they're very talented. Malcolm Butler. Malcolm, yeah. Um, that's Say true. I, Seahawks, man. I was about to say. I was about to say. I don't want to I don't want to even mention Malcolm Butler. Um, I wasn't a Seahawks fan then, though, so I'm not really that butthurt about it. Um yeah, I honestly but, don't recognize like any of these names now that I know. I'm looking at it. Ooh, they have Jabril Peppers. Nice. He's got to be super old now, doesn't he? I don't think he's that old. I feel like he's been around for a while. He has been a while, around for a while. Mm-hmm. But I think he's around, uh, what's his name? Uh, Baker Mayfield's age. Oh, maybe I'm thinking about somebody else then. Because I know he was on the Browns when Baker Mayfield was with them. Yeah. But I don't know if you mentioned it, but... Uh, they have good tight ends. Hunter Henry, Johnny, Johnny Smith. Very true. Super solid. Um, who did they even draft this year? All I know is... Oh, no, bro. They drafted that center of that first pick, remember? In the first round, it was like everybody went crazy. For ins? Um, That might be it. I just remember he was like the 20, 20th pick. Wasn't or something it some like, like random dude? Yeah. Cole Strange. Yeah. Cole Strange, and everybody was like, "What? Is he a guard or a center?" He was uh, a guard. Guard. Yeah, that's why he was even crazier. He's, oh, he left guard. They have him as left guard. Yeah. Um, yeah, and they drafted a couple cornerbacks and a receiver, Tyquan Thornton. Yeah, I, I mean, I think honestly, and I put this in my final analysis, I don't think they have enough firepower to compete with the Bills for the division. Last week, I had the Dolphins nine and eight, and you guys had them a win or two above. That yeah. and I, I'm starting to lean towards that direction now that I'm looking at the Patriots, and uh, I just I honestly think nine and eight is like this almost the ceiling. I think maybe yeah. ten wins, but I just don't see like one of those. Yeah, I get what you're saying. Um, but yeah, Bill Belichick just usually finds a way to win, so I feel like you can't count him out. 
And I think the Patriots will they'll win games and be competitive in uh, basically every game. And AJ's frozen. Conlon, you there? Win games that they uh, shouldn't because they cheat, but that's about it. They do cheat, yes. Also, you know their right tackle, Trent Brown? He is, like, gigantic. I think he's, like, the biggest – let me like read off his like weight and stuff, but he is checking. He's 6'8, 380 pounds. <laughs> Absolutely massive. Um, well, I guess AJ's connection uh, uh, went down, but yeah, I think he's gone. That's, but yeah, that is a massive human being. Yeah, it's gigantic. But I think that's everything we wanted to talk about, right? I think so. Yeah. Hey, um, those Clemson tickets are your wedding present also. So, tell Kaylee that she better wish you the best of luck in that game. Uh, I'll give her, like, a hug or something for her present. I get the tickets. Kaylee gets yeah. a hug. <laughs> we'll see. Well, we should just not tell her and see if she'll listen to this to test her. See, test her loyalty. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's a good point. We'll do that, yeah. All right, well. All right, guess, well. Um. That we'll uh, see you guys Friday. Yeah, Friday. Friday. All right. See you guys. See yeah. ya.